Okay. So welcome to the last day of Quacks. And our uh, first speaker of the morning will be uh, Paul Vedrick from Bonn. And he'll be talking about invariance of four manifolds from Havana Rosansky link homology. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Josh. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to give a talk here. Um, so this is based on joint work with Scott Morrison and Kevin Walker. Um, it's based on a preprint on the archive from July last year. Um, and this is part of a project to understand the field theoretic content of uh, Havana homology and the finite dimensional bi-graded Havana Frosansky link homologies, which categorify the quantum link invariants associated to GLN. So, um, to, so I want to start with some motivation and it makes sense to start one dimension down, to start in dimension three. And most of this talk will be somehow using the interplay of three different mathematical concepts. Uh, on the one hand, link invariants, um, then higher categories, and then manifold invariants. And um, the particular interplay of, of these things I want to illustrate in dimension three. And we start with, uh, with the concept uh, of link invariants, and specifically with the GLN Rashidikin derived invariants of links. So, um, so this link polynomial, um, I denote by PN. It's a function that sends framed oriented links to Laurent polynomials in one variable denoted Q. And um, is, um, it satisfies some local relations. Um, the first one displayed here is a famous gain relation, which says that uh, whenever you can represent uh, three different links by um, diagrams which look the same except in the neighborhood, um, so except in a small disk where they are, uh, where, they, where they each look as shown here. So one has a positive crossing, one has a negative crossing, and one has no crossing at all. Then the corresponding invariance PN will be linearly dependent in the way shown here. Then there's the relation that this polynomial depends in a control, so it depends on the framing of the link, but it does so in a controlled way. If you, if you have a twist in, in the framing, shown here um, by a blackboard framed Reidemeister one-like diagram here, you can remove that at the expense of scaling the polynomial by Q to the N. Um, and one important other property of this polynomial is that it is scaled in a way that it becomes multiplicative under disjoint union. Um, and uh, one can actually see that this polynomial invariant um, of framed links is essentially determined by these local relations um, if you insist that it is non-zero, uh, at least on the unknown. Um, so for example, um, if, if you're bored, you can, you can do the exercise and compute the value of, of the unknown from these relations. Okay, so, so that's the starting point um, at the level of link invariance. And if you have such a link invariant that is essentially determined by local rules, it makes sense to look for an extension of this link invariant to an invariant of frame tangles, so not fragments. And if you ask um, what the conceptual home of such tangle invariants is, a good answer is provided by the ribbon category of finite dimensional representations of the quantum group associated to GLN. Um, and if you, um, and, and the, the corresponding tangle invariants have been constructed by, by Rashtikin and Turaev. Um, so uh, I think most of, most of the people in the audience know how this, how this story works, but I, I want to uh, recall it anyway. So if you, so how does, how does this work? These tangle invariants are morphisms in this category. And if, so, and you can compute these morphisms in the following way. So you start with a tangle diagram with boundary points. Um, so the tangle diagram is drawn in a rectangle. The boundary points are required to be at the bottom of the rectangle or at the top of the rectangle. All the strands are, are oriented and we use the blackboard framing. So somehow the, the, the ribbons are squeezed down onto the plane. And every strand of this tangle is equipped, is labeled by an object of this category. So by, by a representation of the QGLN. And then you do the following uh, thing. So first of all, we want to know 
where, so this should be a morphism of representations. So first we want to know what the source of this morphism is. For that, we just look at the boundary points at the bottom. We look at the labels on the strands. Every time the strand points up, we just uh, write that representation down. So for example, V here, every time the strand points down, you write the dual, um, and then you tensor them up. So here we see, for example, this strand is labeled V, and so we get V tensor V dual tensor W, and on the top we get U dual tensor U tensor W, and this version taking to arrive invariants construct intertwiners, so a morphism from the thing at the bottom to the thing at the top, and uh, if you look at these tangle diagrams, then you realize that the only type of data you need to provide is intertwiners for cups, caps, and crossings, and what uh, the cups and the caps are somehow the natural uh, units and co-units for uh, for, for duals and the, the, the data of the crossing is provided by the braiding uh, on, on, this, uh, on this category. So um, it turns out that, okay, so you can recover this link polynomial PN from the story. In the link polynomial PN, we, we silently put the vector representation of GLN on all link components. And then if we draw the link, so every link diagram is also a tangle diagram, but we the tangle diagram, but we don't see any boundary points. So at the bottom we see the trivial representation, at the top we see the trivial representation. The tangle diagram represents an intertwiner, which is just multiplication uh, by uh, an element in the ground ring, and that is this polynomial P PN of the link diagram. Um, so, so, so somehow this category allows you to recover the link polynomial. And actually conversely, you can also use the local relation satisfied by this link polynomial PN to describe the ribbon category completely. Um, um, at, least, at least if you're in some kind of a, a, a semi-simple context. And this is somehow what's um, related to, um, to WIPs uh, that have appeared in, in many talks in this conference already. Okay, so this is somehow the, the second viewpoint, the third viewpoint of these manifold invariants. So the simplest possible manifold invariant that you can um, that you can approach when you have a link invariant that is controlled by local relations is uh, a scan module. And in the case of GLN, we can define uh, a scan module in the following way. So given a compact oriented three manifold M, um, and this uh, may be closed or it might have some boundary and it has, if it has some boundary, we're allowed to um, fix a finite set of framed points in the boundary. Let's denote that by P. And then we define a skin module of the three manifold relative to the set of boundary points to be spanned. So it's a, you start out with a free module over the ring of Laurent polynomials spanned by framed oriented tangles in the three manifold with boundaries um, on that on that fixed set of boundary points p, and then this is this is some huge free module, and you mod out by isotopy relative to the boundary and local relations, and the local relations are exactly the relations satisfied by this polynomial p n, and they are imposed in every three ball that you can see inside the three manifold. So whenever you zoom into your three manifold, you just see a little three ball in there. Um, then you impose this relation between linear these relations that you see on the top of the slide uh, on linear combinations of tangles there. And um, okay, so this is something you can construct when you know the link polynomial. You can also construct it um, from knowing this ribbon category. And conversely, you can you can recover a link invariant by evaluating the skin module, let's say, on a three ball, and you can reconstruct the morphism spaces in this ribbon category, evaluating these scan modules on certain cylinders of the disks. So in some sense, all of these three concepts are very closely related to each other. And uh, the scan modules themselves uh, actually form the three-dimensional part of something that wants to be a four-dimensional topological field theory uh, that extends um, an extended topological field theory. Um, but um, it typically doesn't want to be defined on four manifolds. So it, we see the skin modules here give the three-dimensional part, then you can extend down to, um, to, to surfaces and you, you get to the concept of skin algebras, and then you can go down to the point, and to the point this theory would assign the ribbon category rev UQGLN itself. Um, but this, uh, and, and all of these um, 
all of these manifold invariants satisfy nice gluing properties. Um, but typically, you cannot extend this up to four manifolds, only in certain circumstances, and um, you can extend this to four manifolds. Um, okay, so this is somehow the, the, the starting uh, point, one dimension down. Let's go one dimension up. So basically, we'd like to see uh, a relationship uh, between three different concepts uh, as before. Uh, between link invariants, higher categories, and manifold invariants. And the starting point is again at the level of link invariants. And we start with the GLN Havana Rosansky link homologies, uh, which were originally constructed in 2004, Havana Rosansky. Um, and what are they? Well, they're functors from categories of links and link cobordisms between them, considered up to isotopy relative to the boundary with targets in the bounded homotopy category of chain complexes of graded vector spaces. And when you start with a link and you compute the corresponding chain complex and then take a graded Euler characteristic, you recover the polynomial PN that we had on the previous slide. So in this sense, these are categorifications. Um, the fact that these uh, invariants um, can be upgraded to such factors, which, re which respect the composition of link cobordisms um, requires a, um, uh, is somehow a more recent development. Um, it requires a new construction of these Havana Rolansky link homologies, which use the combinatorial form evaluation of uh, Robert and Wagner that we've already heard about this week. And um, the, the proof that this is then um, functorial on the link cobordisms you can find in a paper with Michael Erik and Daniel Tubenhauer. And, and both of these more recent developments are, are from about three years ago. Okay, um, so what's new in this uh, paper from last year with uh, Scott Morrison and Kevin Walker? Well, the other two, somehow the other two sides of the story. So on the level of higher categories, um, we extract from the Havana rosansky GLN theory, uh, something that can be some four dimensional algebraic structure, which can be considered as a categorification of the ribbon category on dimension down, um, and it can be formalized in different ways. Um, it can be described as a kind of a ribbon two category, where the other thing was a ribbon category, um, or as a, as a disc-like for a category. And from such a thing, you can build skein modules. And um, so what, what are they in this case? So here we allow compact oriented smooth four manifolds and uh, they need not be closed, they can have boundary, and if they have boundary, we'll allow some links in the boundary. So I'll fix a link in the boundary called L, then um, and we build such a skin module, and from this skin module, you can recover the original havana Rosansky link homology by evaluating on the four ball um, with a, a, a usual link in, this, in the S3 boundary. And similar as before, this is uh, expected to be part of a kind of extended, but only partially defined five-dimensional topological field theory. The skin modules should give the four-dimensional part, should extend all the way down to the point. The value on the point is this, uh, this ribbon two category or this disk-like four category. Um, and um, and um, it probably doesn't extend up to all five manifolds. Okay, so this is somehow the, the overview. Um, before going into details, I should ask if there are any questions at this point. Doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, and uh, what I should also do is um, to, to put this in perspective to some, uh, with some other approaches to ex uh, for extending Havana Rosansky homology, um, either to three manifolds or to links in other three manifolds. So uh, a few approaches that I'm aware of are uh, the program to categorify the Witten, Rashitike, and Turai three manifold invariants. Um, recall that these invariants are, are, are numerical invariants of closed three manifolds. And I put that in perspective with these skein modules. They were already vector spaces associated with three manifolds. So this requires, um, uh, things like tensor product categorification, categorification at roots of unity. 
and maybe one good way of of somehow um, distinguishing this approach from the approach that I'm talking about here is that what what this approach is what I understand this approach to be doing is uh, to study the representation theory of categorified quantum groups. Whereas um, the story that I'm talking about works with a categorification of the representation category of the, category, of the quantum group. So this, the categorifying Whitney Rescheteek and Turaev invariance studies rep cat UQGLN. And um, what we're doing is we study cat rep UQGLN. And cat and rep typically don't commute. Okay, so this is one thing. Um, another um, way of trying to extend Kuwana Rosansky homology would be to take the three dimensional skin modules, which are vector spaces or modules over for some rings of Laurent polynomials, and categorify them directly. So somehow find categories whose K0 um, recovers the skin modules. And there are different ways of trying to do that, and one can distinguish them by the way in which they um, encode the three manifold. So the three manifold is, um, can be, for example, presented as some surgery on a link in the three sphere, uh, or it can be represented um, by some Hegel splitting. And there, there are different approaches towards categorifying the skin modules depend on the way this is actually presented. Um, another potential approach that I don't know much about would be, uh, would be to extend a weakness model for Kovana homology, which is currently formulated for links in R3 to other ambient three manifolds. So these are other approaches. What, um, what I'm talking about here is somehow constructing higher skin modules from, um, from a four category, which for some four dimensional category, which is itself obtained from a functorial tangle invariant. So in some sense, this, in this talk, there's not much categorification happening. It's actually somehow taking a categorified invariant in this kovano fresansky homology and building some manifold invariants out of it. I like Nito's question. <laughs> but yeah, that's the only thing I can say. OK, um, let's get started. So I want to, OK, so um, I should say at this point, um, the idea to extend uh, Havana homology or Havana Frosansky homology to some kind of a skin model is not new. So this idea has been around for at least 10 years, uh, but there was a technical obstacle. And somehow in the first part of the talk and before the break, I want to um, talk about this obstacle and how we overcame this problem. So let's recall uh, what the Havana Frosansky link homologies actually are and how they're defined. So, so somehow they're the top arrows in this commutative diagram. So what do we have here? Um, so the bottom left, we consider links embedded in a three ball. So, um, and we, we, we form them into a category where the morphisms are cobordisms in the three ball times interval considered up to isotopy relative to the boundary. Um, if we just forget the morphisms and just look at the links, um, then we can evaluate this polynomial PN and get a Laurent polynomial. Um, but this category of links and cobordisms up to isotopy has a combinatorial model, um, a category where the objects are linked diagrams in the disk um, and the morphisms are sequences, or if you want, movies of link diagrams, which represent cobordisms. They are somehow time slices through cobordisms. You just keep track of how the link diagram changes. And if you take enough time slices, you can reconstruct the, reconstruct the cobordism up to isotopy. And um, so the Kovana Rosansky homology um, homologies are defined as functors from this category of link diagrams and movies of link diagrams up to, um, to this movie moves to the bounded homotopy category of graded uh, of chain complexes of graded vector spaces. Um, such that if you take the other characteristic, you get the polynomial PN, as we've already said. And if you look at this diagram, um, you realize that to define such a link homology, you need somehow three steps. So first of all, you need to assign a chain complex to each link diagram. Um, then for each basic movie, somehow the, the, what happens between two different time slices and the, in the two very nearby time slices in the link cobordisms, you have to associate a chain map. 
Um, and then at some point, and then in the third step, you have to check that these, uh, this chain map satisfies certain coherence relations. So here is one example of such a coherence relation. So what we're looking at here are four strands in the link diagram, which somehow cross over each other. And what, what, what is happening, if you look at what happens in this movie, basically what we've just done is we've just taken this picture and we'll shake it around. And then it returns to the original configuration. And um, if you interpret this as a tangle cobordism, it is isotopic to the identity. And whatever havana Rosansky homology assigns to such a movie of tangle diagrams, you want that this is homotopic to the identity map because this tangle cobordism is uh, isotopic to the identity. So if you want to check that this is indeed true, you have to compose eight, random, I think it's eight, eight randomized to three chain maps that somehow come from the definition of Kovana Frosansky homology and compute the composite chain map and check that it's homotopic to the identity. So those are the types of coherence relations that one needs to check. Okay, so post we want to build a skin module uh, with the properties that I've mentioned. Then um, one thing that we want is that this Scale module evaluated on the four ball of the link in the boundary should recover the usual Havana homology, the Havana Frosansky homology of that link. That means that uh, we need Havana Frosansky homology to be well defined for links in the three sphere, not just the three ball. So the, the previous results for the functionality of Havana Frosansky homology were all for the three ball, or for R3. Now you might think that this is not a huge difference, um, but it's actually, it actually bases a small difference. And um, to see what this difference is, let's go through the three steps of defining such a link homology. First, uh, we need to assign a chain complex to each link diagram. So if you have a link in S3, um, and we think of the three sphere as just, uh, just a, just being um, a three ball with a point at infinity added, then links in, a, in the three sphere will generically avoid this point at infinity. And if you just take it out and consider the link as living in the three ball, you can, you can basically assign the same chain complex. There's some, some details in there, that, some technical details that I'm hiding, but, but this is the idea. Um, similarly, when we have a link cobordism, which is a two manifold in three sphere times interval, this will generically avoid the fiber over the point of the infinity, which is a one manifold. So we have a two manifold and a one manifold inside a four manifold. So if this avoids, um, so, so generically they don't intersect and we can use the same construction as before, essentially we assign the same chain maps. But now we have to consider isotopies of link cobordisms. And now they live in the three sphere times interval times interval, so some five manifold. And this isotopy itself can be is something three dimensional in this five manifold. And now it might actually intersect the fiber over the point at infinity and generically it does. Um, and whenever it does, there's a new movie move that needs to be checked, a new type of coherence relation. And it's illustrated here. Um, so um, you have, a, consider this tangle here. It's a one-one tangle, um, and there's one. It's some a tangle with one boundary point at the top, one at the bottom, and it's closed up. And now this closure arc rotates 360 degrees around. So it turns out that this cobordism um, is isotopic to the identity when this when this when this link is considered as living in the three sphere, but not necessarily isotopic to the identity when you just consider it as living in the three ball. Um, and so you need to check these kinds of relations, and that's what we do in, in this paper. So our theorem is that this kovano rosansky homology is invariant under this move, which we call the sweep around move, and thus functorial in the free sphere. So I'm almost ready to go into the break, but I want to go through the next slide and just give a, a brief rundown how this proof actually goes. Um, this might be of interest for experts. So the idea is, so the problem with the sweep around move is that it is um, of unbounded complexity. Um, you need to prove this for every one one tangle. And uh, well, somehow this is at least as complicated as, as, as link theory. Um, but 
you can reduce this to the case where this one one tangle is actually represented as a braid where all but one um, strands at the top are connected or are somehow closed up with uh, boundary points at the bottom. Uh, that's the first step. And then instead of showing that somehow moving this strand all the way around, the, the jump rope thing, is the identity, we can also check that somehow moving the strand in front of the tangle is the same thing as moving the strand um, uh, around the back of the tangle. Um, and, and then this can be represented as a very nice composition of chain maps where you first see a Rademeister 1 move, then you see Rademeister 2 moves, then you see lots of Rademeister 3 moves, then you undo Rademeister 2 moves, and then you undo a Rademeister 1 move. And now we have such a uh, two such types of composite chain maps, one where the strand goes in front, one where the strand goes in the back. And then um, these, um, these chain maps can be filtered by the homological degree of the extra crossings that we create um, while doing this move. And then we apply some kind of, uh, some filtered version of the Kaufmann trick. So for everybody who's tried to check that the Kaufmann bracket is invariant under the Rademeister three move, when you already know that it's invariant under the Rademeister two move and you know the skin relation, then you know what I'm talking about. So um, that sort of trick together with the filtration uh, shows that these chain maps going in front and going around the back are actually equal. Okay, so this proves that kovano rosansky homology satisfies the sweep around move and that is functorial in the three sphere. And now I'm ready for the break. Uh, that's great. We'll reconvene at 8.31. Uh, in the meantime, questions. So in the very first movie which you gave, uh, I noticed that there were the, the non-trivial movie, that's the non Meister movie movie that took place. For such a movie, how do you tell without looking at surfaces that the uh, corresponding uh, cobordism should induce the identity? Um, so let me go back and can you point me to which kind of move I should look at? Uh, sure, so right in the, right in the beginning, I guess. Uh, On the slide? No, no, before this, before this. Before this, yeah. Uh, before this one. Before this? Yeah, for this one. Yeah. Uh, so if, for example, so the, even from the first, first segment to the second segment, you have the non-trivial movie move, right? So this like is a Rademeister 3 move. So this is, yeah, so there's a, somehow a basic oh. thing happening between them. You see this middle crossing, the central yeah. crossing just moves to the left. Okay, I see. So, so all happens. these are just Rademeister 3. Okay, thank you. Exactly, thank you. yeah. There are eight, eight Rademeister 3 chain maps. <laughs> <laughs> this is the old Zamologikov. Exactly, <laughs> so the Zamologikov tetrahedron equation or something like that. So for a non Rademeister movie moves, is there any way to tell if like some compositions give you the identity or is there no um, way to... What do you mean by non randomized movie move? One that uh, uses mm, somehow more critical points, or what do you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. Births and deaths. Births and deaths of circles and saddles. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so these kinds of um, somehow differences between frames, these kind of basic movies, you also have to assign certain chain maps. And Essentially, they're they're already built into the construction of, of this version of Havana Fosansky homology by uh, using using these Gobert Wagner forms. Um, yeah, and then and then you have to check these kinds of movie moves. And I mean, different movie moves have different checks, uh, and I don't remember all of them at the moment. So, yeah. Thank Can you. I ask um, yeah. whether uh, you did you have more material? Uh, no, please go ahead. Um, can I ask whether triply graded non homology is uh, invariant under the super round move? Um, it's a good question. Um, um, I think the same techniques should allow to approach um, this problem. I mean, you're using circle diagrams right there, yes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's a fun story <laughs> uh, <laughs> where these diagrams are coming that. from. Uh, exactly. Um, no, so I haven't checked it. 
but somehow everything that happens between these rhodomyces threes and rhodomyces two, uh, so rhodomyces threes and rhodomyces twos, that just goes through in the in the triplicates. And, but I haven't looked at the rhodomyces one once. So yeah, it's a natural question. Yeah, so the, the thumb background story. So these these diagrams essentially come from a, a paper by Ben Elias and, and Daniel Krasner. And and somehow the so basically, I, I realized that this kind of argument works um, on a flight from Australia to, to Austria back in the times where this was still a thing. Um, and, 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 the, and the check that this argument works was then really easy because I only had to copy these, these pictures out of, out of Ben's paper and then highlight the filtration preserving parts. So this is something that works at what, uh, 40,000 feet with uh, lower partial pressure of oxygen, which is nice. Um, do we still have time for one more question or is the break over? Yeah. Uh, Paul, could you say like a little bit more about how the invariants sometimes can be moved to like a higher dimension, either in the classical three-dimensional and four-dimensional setting or with like your new 4D, 5D things? Well, how it can be moved to a higher dimensional setting. Um, so somehow this is, this is a bit of orthogonal to what, what I'm talking about here. So basically I, I want to take this, this invariant, this corona fosonsky homology, which is somehow already four dimensional. And I want to convert work this somehow four dimensional invariant of links and cobordisms into a four dimensional invariant of manifolds. Um, there's, there's, there's somehow, there's also, um, if you, if you have such a, three plus epsilon dimensional TQFT, like this, this uh, Kranietta construction. It's under some circumstances, you can extend this one dimension up by, by doing some kind of a state sum construction, but this requires additional finiteness properties. Uh, and and it, it's somehow a bit of an orthogonal um, direction. I don't, I don't know, I mean, probably not answering that question, but I, I'd be happy to talk later. No, that was helpful. Thank you so much. All right, let's begin again. Great. Okay, so um, so the, the slide here somehow recalls what we've actually done already. And so the next steps will be to extend from this functorial link homology in S3 to a four manifold invariant. And um, and so I actually, actually want to talk about two different ways of doing this. The first one is somehow a naive way. And um, basically this works for every link homology that is functorial in the three sphere and which is monoidal under this joint union of diagrams in the, in the plane. Um, and um, yeah, so whenever you see kovano rosansky homology in the next few, few slides, you can replace this by your favorite Link homology that is functorial in the three sphere and monoidal, um, and then at the end I want to comment on a on a on a, on a fancier construction. Okay, so um, slide is uh, from link homology to skein modules, and okay, so let's recall the description of this three-dimensional skein module. So what was it? So for a three manifold with some points in the boundary. We consider framed oriented tangles inside the three manifold with boundary on P, and then we mod out by local relations. And uh, a more conceptual way of explaining what these relations are is to say that they are somehow the kernel of the Reshikikin to derived functor, considered as a functor that takes tangles to certain elements of a vector space. And um, so, so you linearize uh, the cobordism category or you linearize the space of tangles inside the three manifold, and then you mod out by the kernel of this algebraic invariant. And we would like to do something similar, one dimension up, by taking um, a vector space spanned by framed oriented surfaces in the four manifold W with boundary on the link L, and then mod out by the kernel of uh, of kovano rosansky homology, essentially. And we want to mod out by the kernel of kovano rosansky homology um, in every four-dimensional ball that we see in the four-manifold. 
The problem is that this doesn't really work. Um, and, and one reason is that it's already conflicting with um, the desired outcome that if we evaluate this thing on the floor ball with the link in the boundary, we should get the Hoana Frosansky homology of the link. So if, uh, if, if, if this was the case, then, and, and this construction would work, then we would need that the Hoana Frosansky homology of a link is always spanned by the images of cobordism maps from the empty link, which is just not true. And so we need to consider some kind of enhanced version of skeins. We cannot just take surfaces in the four manifold. So we need some decorated surfaces as, as, as elements of our skein module. So let's describe what, the, what they are. So one way to um, say what they are is to first describe that havana rosansky homology um, is a lasagna algebra. Uh, a lasagna algebra is an algebra for the lasagna operat. It's a bit of an ad hoc concept, um, but uh, yeah, so, so what, what is such a lasagna algebra? Um, so lasagna algebra consists of the following data. For every three sphere with a link in it, this lasagna algebra should assign a vector space. Okay, for us, this will be just the havana frosansky homology of the link in that three sphere. And then, to every diagram as shown on the left-hand side, it should assign a certain linear map. The diagram on the left-hand side shows a four-dimensional ball. Sorry, I, I, I'm trying to draw something four-dimensional here. So this is a four-dimensional ball. Um, on the boundary three sphere, we see a link L. Inside the boundary three sphere, we see a link L. And then from the interior of that four ball, we've removed some smaller four balls that created a new three sphere every time. And on each of these three spheres, we have another link. So we consider these internal boundaries as inputs and the output of the boundary as output. Um, and then in addition to, to this data, the complement of the small balls inside the big ball um, is allowed um, or is it is required to have a surface sigma inside, a framed oriented surface, um, which, um, which intersects the boundary transversely in exactly these links, input links and output links. And it's also allowed to have closed components. So to such a gadget, a lasagna algebra should assign a linear map from the tensor product of the input vector spaces, so the, in this case, the Havana Brzezinski homologies of the links that you see on the boundary, or that you see inside the three spheres that are the boundaries of these internal four balls, to the Havana Brzezinski homology um, for the link on the, on the outside. And um, you can build such a thing from Havana Brzezinski homology um, in the following way. If you, so the easiest case is when you only have a single input sphere. Because in that case, this four manifold is just diffeomorphic to the three sphere times an interval. And what we're looking for is a linear map for a cobordism sigma from the input link to the output link. And that is provided by the functionality of Kolana Kosansky homology and the link cobordism. So that's basically what this is designed to do. Um, if you have several input spheres, you have to be a bit more creative. Um, and one thing you can do is you can go from um, several input spheres to just one input spheres by, by, uh, by tubing them together. You can pick a base point on each of the, in each of these spheres uh, and then pick an arc or um, actually a tree that connects these base points. The tree lives um, um, in this, um, four ball minus small four balls. And then you can drill out a neighborhood of these arcs and, and connect some of these, this, oh, yeah, you can sum these spheres together. And um, the problem, so then, then you can ask whether, whether this is a well-defined operation and it turns out it is. And the, the kind of check that you have to do is again related to the sweep around move. And um, at, at this point you see that this is, um, uh, so the sweep around move appears in many, many places in, in running this construction. Okay, so this is, this is, a, this is a lasagna operat and Kovana-Fosansky homology gives an example 
of a Lasagna algebra, an algebra for this operand. So now what are the skeins that we consider to form the skin module? Uh, the skeins are called Lasagna fillings of the four manifolds. Um, and given, given, given such a four manifold with a link in the boundary, the Lasagna filling consists of the following data. Um, so here, this, this is supposed to indicate the four manifold. Uh, the link in the boundary is drawn, is drawn here. And again, um, such a Lasagna filling consists of the data of um, a finite number of disjoint four balls inside the, inside the four manifold in the interior of the four manifold. Each of them um, has boundary, somehow creates a new three sphere boundary component on the inside. On that boundary component, you can see a link. Uh, and if you see a link, you should specify an element of the Hovano Fosansky homology of that link, and that's denoted VI. And Again, as before, we consider um, surfaces in the complement of four manifolds, so complement of the four balls inside the four manifold, intersecting um, exactly in the boundary exactly in these links. That's a lasagna filling. And that's the, that's the kind of model for schemes um, for this four manifold scheme module. And you should, you should think of these, um, these schemes as being surfaces sigma which have local decorations given by elements of kovana rosansky homology of links of cutting out, um, cutting out a, a ball um, from a region where the surface passes through. Some of our local decorations on these surfaces include these kovana rosansky homology elements. Okay, and then this four-manifold skin module, the, the kind of uh, naive uh, four-manifold skin module, is just defined as the bigraded vector space uh, spanned by the lasagna fillings of the four manifold modulo some equivalence relation. Uh, and the equivalence relation goes as follows. So suppose you have a lasagna filling as shown on the left, which say has three input spheres. Uh, then you can imagine taking, uh, somehow cutting out um, a, a larger four ball from the four manifold, which con contains some of the inputs. And if you cut out such a, such a larger four ball, you see a diagram that looks a bit like the one on the right. Um, and you declare these diagrams to be equivalent if the decoration V that labels the, um, that labels the new input sphere is exactly the image of the lasagna algebra map associated to the lasagna diagram that lives inside the larger ball, four ball that we've cut out, evaluated on the inputs that were inside there. Okay, so that's the sort of thing that models the kernel of the Koana Fosansky um, evaluation on cobordisms. Okay, so, so this is, is there a question? Okay. All right. So let me let me go on. So there's a there's maybe a more conceptual way of of explaining what these invariants should be, um, and it, it it goes via the root of higher categories. So um, if you have so one thing we should recall is that Hoana Vrozansky homology is actually first defined as an invariant. Um, of tangles that is functorial under tangle cobordisms. And then this includes the, the case of links. Um, but the, in this case, the target is not uh, the bounded homotopy category of, of uh, great chain complexes uh, of, of vector spaces, sorry, bounded homotopy category of chain complexes of great vector spaces, but it's more like the homotopy category of a certain uh, additive form category. Um, and, um, having such a functorial tangle invariant immediately gives us um, a certain four-dimensional category built in the following way. So um, this four-dimensional category can be described as a braided monoidal two category, uh, where the objects are somehow tangle boundary sequences. One morphisms are effectively tangle diagrams, but we have to be a bit more careful and say that there are more data for tangle diagrams. So it's some kind of combinatorial version of tangle diagrams. And then the two morphisms are just somehow the, um, the morphism spaces um, between the hovano rosansky tangle invariants associated uh, to, these one, to the source and target one morphism. 
um, and um, and if you if you make this definition, then you can check that this is a well-defined braided uh, monoidal um, two category or DG two category. Um, and the axioms for such a braided monoidal two category translate exactly into, into certain kinds of movie moves that, that we've checked when we've checked um, that kavanagh Fasansky homology is functorial under cobordisms. Um, and we can think of this braided monoidal TG2 category as a categorification of uh, the representation category of UQGLN. Now, if you have such a, such a, um, such a higher category, um, um, one question that you can ask is whether this fits into the framework of uh, the cobordism hypothesis. So, so, the, so the dream is that uh, this four-dimensional category is a four-dualizable and SO4 uh, or homotopy SO4 fixed object in a suitably defined five category of braided monoidal DG2 categories. Um, if this is the case, then this was, would uh, somehow automatically via the cobordism hypothesis determine um, a local partially defined extended uh, topological field theory defined on zero manifolds up to four manifolds um, and, um, and, and probably not up to five manifolds. So um, such a, so if this is true, um, um, and there's a lot of work to be done in this direction because um, um, these five categories have not been defined yet and it's not been um, studied yet what uh, SO4, homotopy SO4 fixed points actually look like. Um, then one could try to construct this uh, whole TFT using something like uh, beta factorization homology. Um, but already in this paper from last year, we proposed a direct construction of this uh, top dimensional part, this uh, four plus epsilon dimensional part. And the theorem there is that havana rosansky homology controls a disk-like four category. That's an alternative uh, description of this braided monoidal DG2 category, which determines uh, a more refined um, invariant uh, of the scheme module uh, via the blob complex. And then the old invariant that I've described before, which had the superscript zero is, is somehow the zeroth homology of the blob complex. And the difference um, somehow superficially is that instead of imposing an equivalence relation, somehow taking a quotient of, um, of uh, this space of lasagna diagrams, you want to impose this quotient in a derived way. Okay, so um, I want to finish with a, a few examples. So in the case of the four ball, um, this derived version of the scan module uh, coincides with the naive version of the scan module and computes the havana rosansky homology of the link, essentially from the definition. Um, and in the case of the three ball, um, we expect that the invariant of a null homologous link in the boundary of B3 times S1 is the Hochschild homology um, um, of uh, the a DG category associated to the, to the three ball uh, with coefficients in the DG bimodule associated to a tangle that closes to that link. And this uh, DG category associated to the three ball um, is most likely closely is, is most likely closely related to a GLN analog of Havana's arc algebra, and we expect that this invariant for the three ball times S one is somehow a GLN analog of Rosansky's homology theory for null homologous links in S two times S one. And um, this is a this is an interesting invariant. Um, it's defined as the Hochschild homology of, um, of Hovanov's tangle invariant, which takes values in bimodules for the arc algebra. And one thing that I've, I've been wondering for a long time and that I've been confused about for a long time is why if you take the Hochschild homology of this tangle invariant and the tangle lives in the three ball, why you get an invariant of links in S2 times S1 rather than the two disk times S1. And if this conjecture is true, then this would somehow give a conceptual explanation for why this is true. Because if you close the tangle, which lives, um, if you close this tangle here, 
it somehow naturally lives on the boundary of B3 times S1, which is S2 times S1. And if this is true, it actually opens up um, um, a, a route to compute some of these four manifold invariants because it's known that the that Rosansky's invariant for a link in uh, S2 times S1 can actually be computed or approximated through invariance of links in the three sphere um, somehow by inserting an infinite full twist instead of going along one handle. Um, um, and, and, and Mike really says some really interesting work in this direction and generalizing to connect sums of S2 times S1. I think this is somehow the, a, a good next direction to go um, to, to actually make this four manifold invariants computable. Okay, so I'll stop here. Thank you very much. All right, very nice. Are there any questions? Um, there's already some questions in chat. Um, All right. But uh, uh, basically the ultimate, the original question was from Gage Martin. Do you want to ask it, Gage, or should? Uh, no, I mean, I think that the chat mostly answered the question. Okay, okay, great. Um, when did Professor Lasagna invent Lasagna algebras? And I think the lasagna algebras are, are are quite old. So I mean, the motivation the motivation, as was mentioned in the chat, uh, are somehow so in the in in this in the sub factor community and planar algebra community. There's a there's this picture of this spaghetti and meatballs uh, uh, way of describing planar algebras, where somehow um, yeah, inputs are meatballs and and they're connected by 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 spaghetti. And um, basically, we, we all know these kinds of plain algebras. Uh, for example, the temple Lieb algebra would be, would be a vegetarian version thereof. It doesn't have any meatballs. It only has spaghetti. And, uh, and here, this is somehow, most of the stuff here is actually working in twice the dimensions. In particular, the things that connect these things are, are two-dimensional. So there should be lasagna sheets instead of spaghetti. Uh, And some solid four-dimensional meat. Or... Exactly. You cannot make this this vegetarian. Yeah. So I wonder if there is some four-dimensional oven form of diagrammatics that would help you compute such an invariant, or if the usual thing is to use maybe one of the conjectures you mentioned at the end to, to reduce to some simpler version of klavanov rosansky homology in lower dimensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean the the. The, the best thing to compute this invariant would be to understand how it depends on the handle decomposition of the four manifold. And then use, use gluing properties. And somehow this conjecture tells you what happens if you, if you add one handle. Um, could I ask a question related to the conjecture too? I, so I guess S2 cross S1 is, is also the boundary of S2 cross D2. And I was wondering if you think that there's a relationship between your four manifold invariants of S2 cross D2 and the like Willis Rosansky invariants as well. That's a good question. Um, I have some thoughts about this, but I'd rather talk about them afterwards when the video is off. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I ask a question? Hi, Paul. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Okay, just a very daring question. Do you expect your invariant to detect exotic smooth structures on four manifolds? Uh, or do you see any reason why it wouldn't? I, I don't have a strong opinion either way. Fair enough. Do you expect the DG version of all this, like 
when for each movie move you fix a homotopy and maybe higher homotopies, I don't know. Um, I do, yeah, so, so that, that would be really nice. Maybe I can go back uh, a few slides to um, maybe here. Um, just gonna put, put this question in context. So, so here these havana rosansky homologies send link diagrams to chain complexes and then cobordisms to certain chain maps. And then you say, well, but now we only consider these cobordisms up to isotopy and on the level of the target category, we quotient out by homotopies. So I think how I interpret Eugene's question is, um, what if we, if we don't truncate to these, to these homotopy categories that somehow go higher up? And uh, I, I don't see an obstruction for, um, for, for, for this to work. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think it's not been done and it, it's a bit horrendous if one has to ch check somehow higher and higher and higher movie moves. Would you have to um, know the movie? Do we know anything with the movie moves or seen movie moves? Is well, um, from, from a paper of yours, I, I know something about this in the case of braids, um, right. that but not in the general sure. case. And yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't see any, I don't yet see any reason for why this shouldn't work, but I also don't know how to prove anything like that. Um, the best, the best approach there, I think would be to find some kind of geometric realization where this is, where this is, um, automatic in some sense. And also, do you need to decorate lasagna with uh, dots and things on on the surface? Uh, so this is built in. This is built in simply because we. So for example, you could cut out um, a four ball which intersects the lasagna sheet in an unknot, and then you can decorate it by an element of the unknot homology, which includes dots. Are there any more questions? If not, let's thank the speaker and bother him again later.